It's strange to think as I sit here that 20,000 years ago this island and in fact this reef didn't exist. And of course actually 20,000 years ago the world was in the grip of a major ice age and much of the water around me was locked in huge ice sheets that covered most of our planet. At that time, where I'm sitting right now, was probably a grassy hill uh, on a plain that extended out to the edge of the continental shelf. And it's fascinating to think that early Australian hunters probably chased kangaroo in somewhere like this. It's really a weird thought. At the height of the last ice age, sea levels around the world were 120 metres less than they are today. And large parts of the world were exposed with ecosystems like the Great Barrier Reef having retracted to the continental margins, several hundred kilometres from where I sit right now. And as that last ice age ended, sea levels began to increase again as water was released from those ice sheets, essentially pushing the volume of the ocean up. And over 10,000 years, we had a sea level rise of about 120 metres. Now, even though these changes sound very rapid, ecosystems like coral reefs kept pace with rising sea level, eventually covering these grassy hills and turning them into mounds of coral. About 10,000 years ago, sea levels began to stabilise and we began to see the relatively constant conditions of the Holocene. This is the geological epoch that we're currently in and is really uh, the epoch in which modern human society began. About this time, major civilizations appeared in places like the Middle East, Asia and India. Well, at the same time, corals continued to do well under the gradual conditions, eventually reaching the surface of tropical oceans and spreading out to form platform reefs, like the one we have in front of us here on Heron Island. And over time, sediment began to build up on the inside of the reef crest, forming small islands. These islands eventually accumulated soil as terrestrial plants began to arrive, creating forests which expanded over time. Eventually seabirds would have begun to nest in the protection offered by the plants, uh, bringing in nutrients, ammonia, phosphate, urea from their droppings. And of course this then added further nutrients and soil to this growing island and further establishing quite a significant terrestrial ecosystem. And before you knew it, Heron Island as we know it today had formed. Now it's quite wonderful to see how these great systems are shaped by the inevitable arrival of seeds, birds, insects and turtles. So let's go and have a look at the forest here on Heron Island. <laughs> 